Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Up Chem, and in this video, we're going to be looking at electrolytic cells for the first time. So this is going to kind of link with voltaic cells a little bit. So make sure you watch that video first. Okay, we're going to be looking at electrolytic cells, how to draw them, how to identify where oxidation and where reduction is taking place, and the products of an electrolysis of a molten salt. But as always, there's a question to refresh from last lesson first. So pause the video here and have a go at that. Okay, so I'm just going to draw out the cell that we would expect to see from this. We've got our two half cells with our salt bridge in between and we want to see these statements. So what's going to happen? Well, we see magnesium is being oxidized and iron is being reduced. So the electrons will be going from the magnesium half cell to the iron half cell. So we already know that statement A is true, but we can have a look at the other statements and see why they might not be true. Well, iron is going to increase electrons, as we've said, already flow in the other direction and the negative ions. So this is interesting because iron ions are being removed from solution on the right hand side, then that means the solution is becoming more negative. So as the solution becomes more negative because we're removing positive ions, there's going to need to be a movement of positive ions from the salt bridge into the iron solution. And so therefore that last statement is not true. So electrolytic and voltaic cells are the exact opposite. So where we saw voltaic cells give out energy from a spontaneous reaction, here we have a non-spontaneous reaction and we're gonna put in electrical energy and that electrical energy will be converted into the chemical energy required for the products. So for electrolysis, the electrolyte is the reactant that we're going to electrolyze and what happens in this process is we discharge ions. So we either remove negative or positive charge from ions and allow them to become elemental once again. So what's really going on in this process? Well, these are always going to be endothermic reactions because we're requiring energy. That's the electricity that we're providing for the reaction to occur. So if we take an example here, uh, lithium chloride, which would give us lithium and chloride ions, we would then produce chlorine gas and lithium solid. Now the current is moved by the ions in solution similar to that of voltaic cells except we don't have two half cells here and so what that means is is the negative ions lose electrons and the positive ions gain electrons and then we form those elemental components at each electrode. So we need to have this in molten or dissolved solution. Obviously, we can't have this in solid form. Think back to your ionic bonding and we'll understand why. If we think of an ionic lattice of positive and negative charges, we know that this is rigid and doesn't conduct electricity. But once we break those bonds, it can conduct. And that is what allows us to be able to do the electrolysis. Hopefully this helps us further understand that this process is the opposite of the voltaic cell, which turned chemical into electrical energy, as here we're putting in electrical energy to form chemical bonds. Now, just like with voltaic cells, you need to be able to draw these cells. Now, we have a slightly different setup than with voltaic. We only have one chamber for the electrolysis here and we have an external circuit that puts energy into the system. So we still have two electrodes um, and then we have an electrolyte solution, which is going to be the thing that we're going to add energy to and r remove components from. And you'll see in the external circuit, we have the cell, which has the long edge, which is our positive terminal and our negative terminal, the short edge. And this forces electrons around the circuit. This causes the positive ions in solution to move towards the negative electrode and the negative ions to move towards the positive electrode, which means that the positive electrode, we usually produce 
non-metal gas and we usually produce a metal coating at the negative electrode. An easy way to measure the direction of the electrons is to think of the two lines on the cell making an arrow for the direction of the electrons. So at the negative electrode we have the discharging of the metal and the positive we have the discharging of the non-metal. So from this information, we can start naming up our electrodes. So here we have the two electrodes are usually graphite, but on the right negative electrode, we have of course oxidation happening and we know oxidation is always gonna be our anode. And on the left, we have reduction happening. So that is our cathode. The only difference in this in voltaic cells is that the charge is different. Remember, reduction is always at the cathode and ox care, and oxidation is always at the anode, but the charge in electrolytic and voltaic cells is different. So in this one, we have anions going to the anode and cations going to the cathode. And that's the basic structure of our voltaic cell. So let's just summarize the differences between the voltaic and the electrolytic cell then. So as I just mentioned, the anode always has oxidation occurring at it. This is what characterizes the name of the electrode, the process that happens then there, not the overall charge, which you can see is different in the voltaic and the electrolytic cell. The cathode, as I've said, has reduction in both, but we can see the charges are different in the electrolytic and voltaic cell they are switched and that makes sense because we're doing the inverse process one we're getting energy and one we're adding energy okay awesome let's do a couple of questions on that then so first question just want you to say in an electrolytic cell what occurs at the anode pause the video here give yourself a moment for that pop them up Nice simple one to start with. Hopefully you remembered your anox cares. So we know that the anode is always going to be oxidation. Next question then. In an electrolytic cell, what electrode do cations migrate towards? Pause the video here to give yourself a moment for that. Pop them up. So we remembered that in an electrolytic cell, our cathode is always going to be our negative electrode and cations are obviously always going to be attracted to the negative electrode. So they are going to go to the cathode. Now that we've looked at the process, let's look at what the products of an electrolysis are going to be. So with simple metal salts involving monoatomic ions, we're going to get at the cathode, we're going to get cations so that's going to be a metal deposited and so we're going to see an increase in mass at the cathode at the anode we're going to see anions so usually we're going to form a non-metal gas at the anode so for example if we take uh, magnesium bromide liquid then at the cathode we're going to form magnesium solid and at the anode we're going to form bromine gas but how did i know that and how will you be able to tell well there's a quick set of rules we can use to identify the products of electrolysis and this will work in both these simple molten solutions we're now doing now and also more complicated solutions that we'll do in future videos so the first is to identify all of the ions present so the first step in this process is to identify all the ions present and determine which electrode they go to this isn't very difficult when we've only got two ions in a molten solution but will be appropriate later on two we want to find out which ion is discharged if there's more than one ion at each electrode again not an issue for us today writing the half equations for each of those ions that are being discharged is going to allow us to go on to step three and step three we already know how to do step three we're just going to combine the two half equations that we've got at each electrode into an overall redox equation by making the electrons equal and cancelling them out like you already know how to do and then step four is something that people often forget which is consider the qualitative observations are we going to see color changes gas production ph changes these kind of things 
will usually be picking you up a mark here and there in an exam. So these rules will do you for now and also for more complicated electrolysis systems. So let's have a look at an example. Let's take molten potassium chloride. Now, molten potassium chloride, step one, we want to identify our ions, which is K+, which is obviously going to move to our cathode, and Cl- is going to move to our anode. Step two, well, the first part doesn't matter because there's only two ions, there's no competition. Step two, we want to make half equations for our two reactions so we can see the reduction of our potassium and our oxidation of our chlorine. Step three, we want to combine those and we just need to make the electrons equal, which in this case they already are. So we get our overall redox equation. Once we've got our overall redox equation, what is actually happening? Well, we can see here we've got potassium solid, we've got chlorine gas. So we know that we're going to have a precipitation at the cathode, which is going to be kind of a silvery color. And at the anode, we're going to have a green smelly gas, which is going to be produced. And that is, of course, going to be the chlorine gas that is produced. And that's really it. You see here that fully describes what's going on in this reaction. So let's get you doing a couple of questions on that. First question, write the half equation for the process that's going to be happening at the cathode in the electrolysis of molten lead chloride. Pause the video here to give yourself a moment for that. Pop them up. So we know we're going to have the reduction of cations at the cathode, which means we're going to have the cations. So the cation here is Pb2+. Plus. So we're going to have Pb2+, plus, plus two electrons, goes to Pb solid. Next question then, what would be the products of the electrolysis of molten NaBr at the electrodes? Pause the video here to give yourself a moment for that. Pop them up. So then for NaBr, we're going to go through our steps. So we know that we have Na plus and Br minus. There's no other ions present. So we know we're going to have Na plus plus an electron goes to Na. And then we're going to have Br minus goes to Br2 plus an electron. These already have the same number of electrons in the equation, so they cancel out nice and easily for us. So we can write the overall redox equation. Once we've got the overall redox equation, we can have a look at what would happen. So we know we're going to see solid sodium formed, which is going to be a silver solid at the cathode. And that we know we're also going to have the brown slash orange gas produced for the bromine at the anode. Last question then, what would be the qualitative outcomes of the electrolysis of iron chloride? Pause the video here to give yourself a moment for that. Pop them up. Going through our four steps again then, we've got our iron chloride, which is going to give us Fe3 plus ions going to Fe solid. And we're going to have chloride ions going to chlorine gas. So we can do without the full redox equation to actually answer this question, but we're going to do it just for good practice. So we need to multiply that equation by three, which balances us all out with three Cl minus. That little plus sign is meant to be an arrow to the other side of that reaction. Apologies for that there. So we know we're going to form a pale green gas and a silvery solid. Okay guys, as always with this, you're really gonna wanna do some questions to make sure you understand what's going on here. But if you learn this alongside voltaic and understand that this is an endothermic reaction, which is the opposite of a voltaic cell, that can be really, really helpful to your study. Thanks for joining me again. Don't forget, like, subscribe, comment below, hit the bell icon so you get notifications and please check out our other channels, Pop Them Up Food and Pop Them Up Chem. And remember, Practice makes slightly better.